let's take a look at GCA uh, 2, Worksheet 10, last of a long list of worksheets. Uh, just imagine how big CA2 is in terms of material. It's huge. So this, these diagrams look like the last worksheet actually in terms of internal angles and external angles. But this isn't about angles at all. This is about length. So we're looking at the lengths of these chord pieces. And I felt so guilty about not doing a proof the last video that I said I got to do one this time. So here's the main idea of what we're going to use in this particular worksheet. I want to show you where it comes from. Well, let's look at what it says. It says that little length AB times the other part of the chord, BC, will always equal this chord piece times the other chord piece, no matter what. Now, that's a pretty cool relationship, actually, that if two chords cross, the piece is multiplied to equal the other two pieces. Um, why would that be? Now, when I look at this, I see similar triangles is what I see. So when I look at that, I'm thinking, hmm, some similar triangles might be involved here. So let's make some triangles and see if we can spot the idea here. So let me connect these. Now you can see two triangles. Now I'm going to informally prove this, but you can listen and figure it out what we're up to. To prove similarity, hmm, let's do a little bit uh, of review. What are the ways we prove similarity? Three proportional sides, yeah, yeah. Two proportional sides and an angle between them. But the most common way to prove similarity was a. And this is also going to be our technique. Listen, if we can spot two angles and two triangles, they are similar. Done deal. Now, I'm not going to write it out, but you might want to listen carefully because one of the questions asked this, but those are called vertical angles and they're always equal. That's one angle. Now, the second one comes from a lovely relationship. Um, this angle here, angle A and angle D, have to be um, equal because they are inscribed angles on the same arc, E to C. So whatever that arc is, E to C, half of that would be angle A, and half of that same number would also be angle D, two angles, A, A. Because they are similar triangles, there's a proportion of similarity. It would be AB and this guy would match up to DB and that one. And, and BE and this one, BE and this one, would match up to BC and the other one. Because the triangles are similar. When you get similar triangles, two known facts come your way. One, the angles are equal corresponding angles are equal. Two, sides are proportional. Now watch what happens when we cross multiply. Magic! We get that cool relationship. All right, I proved it. I did it. I just couldn't do it without it. Now, here, let's just show you how quick and simple this is. This little relationship says 7 times 3.5 has to equal 8 times x. So you know what to do. 7 times 3.5 divided by 8. That gives me a goofy number, but uh, 3.06 would be maybe where I round that. So I put my little approximately symbol in there uh, to show that it wasn't, I did some rounding, but maybe that's the answer to two decimal places. Ah, there's more like that. You don't need more help with that. It's super simple. Here, uh, notice that, again, it looks like the diagram in the past, but we're going to talk about lengths. Now, I'm not going to prove this one, but I'm going to say it works a lot like the last one. And the two triangles you're going to make are these ones. You've got a guy that's here. Uh, I should have labeled this A, B, C. This has got to be D, right? Um, a, C, D, you see that one there, and then the other one is A, B, E. 
I don't want to give too much away, but they have a common angle. And this angle here is equal to this angle here because they're both inscribed on the same arc. AA, same idea. Now, this guy's trickier though. When you compare the sides, it works like this. AB times, watch this though, AC equals AD times AE. Now what a lot of students want to do is use the last theorem set up for this relationship. But my clue to you is notice the way it will work. It's this, what I call the outside piece, times the whole length. And it's the outside piece times the whole length. This is important to remember because what a lot of students want to do is just multiply these two pieces, these two pieces like the last one. Eh, don't do that. That's what the bad kids do. No, not bad, bad, but just those that make mistakes. Don't do it. So let me show you quickly how this sets up. I'm not going to solve this one just for time. So let's get a little space right here. So this would go like this. Five is the outside. 5 is the outside, and the whole is 10.2. Where did 10.2? Can you see where it came from? Equals the outside, 5.8, the outside, as the whole piece, which would be 5.8 plus x. Now you're going to want to multiply that in. Maybe we better do this, right? 5, five times 10.2, I know what that is. That's 51. 5.8 times 5.8 is 33.64, and then I get plus 5.8x. Bring that over, 51 minus 33.64 is 17.36, and now I'm going to divide by 5.8, and I get, again, kind of a goofy little number, um, and I'm going to round it to two decimal places, and uh, it actually is very close to 3, this number is a 3 here, so I do not change this. This is if I'm rounding it to two decimal places. Anyways, this is almost about 3 uh, centimeters or whatever my measurement length is. So this is how they set up. Um, they are about lengths, and understand that they are not the same. This is two pieces equals two pieces. This is the outside times the whole and the outside times the whole. Good luck with it. Pay attention to this little lesson. It'll help you.